here tonight, too, for our second night of the June Jubilee. So let's just worship and praise. And I'm looking forward to the message tonight, looking forward to Brother Rick Moreland singing for us. Amen. And I hope that you have a good time here tonight. Amen. All right, here we go. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. Go invited to the happy jubilee. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. You're invited to a happy jubilee. When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ in ages long, heaven's jubilee. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. You're invited to a happy yes. jubilee. You're invited to a happy jubilee. You're invited to a happy jubilee. Amen. 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 Oh, page number two. Page number two. That comes right after page number one. Yes. Page number two, glory to his name, down at the cross, singing, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of white, glory to his name, glory. So sweetly abides within There at the cross where he took me in Glory to his name Glory to his name Glory to his name There to my heart was the blood about the streets 
of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Just stand up if you will, and we're going to sing that little chorus. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me. And he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're glad to have Brother Rick Moreland, brother. God bless your heart. Thanks for being here tonight. We love you, brother. Amen. I mean, he's getting ready to go to heaven one day. Amen. Who knows? Maybe tonight.
and over the cross he go. Well, who am I? Aren't you glad that he died for us? Amen. In spite of us. Amen. A lot of people out there today are just what this song talks about. Oh. 
the road to Glory Land. Brother Tim, I didn't look at the clock when I started, so you might have to get the hook out. It's good to be here tonight. It's good to be here amongst family and friends, and good to see a lot of faces that we know and love. And uh, it's been a while since we've uh, been to, you know, this place looks familiar because I've been here before a couple times when uh, uh, Robin's uncle used to have this church, Brother Rooker. And uh, I'm just so happy that things turned out the way it did for you all. And just so happy. Give yourselves a hand because the Lord's definitely, definitely was in this. And Robin, my wife's back there. She's back there cheering me on. And uh, I'm thankful for her. Uh, we got married in this church. Now, this church was in Plainfield, but we're still this church. <laughs> Amen. That's been, that has been a while. Now it's been, it'll soon be nine years, and it doesn't really seem that long ago to me. And I painted the outside of that church and the inside of that church. And I'm kind of glad I didn't have to paint the inside of this church. No, but seriously, thank you, Brother Tim, for inviting us and, uh, we're just, you know, God's so good to us. And though we though we stumble and though we fall and though we make our mistakes, God still loves us. Amen. It took me a long time, Brother Ray, to realize that. And uh, if you're here tonight, if you're struggling, you've been struggling, whatever the case, as, as Brother Jim said, or Brother Ray said, one of them said that, you know what, he still loves you. And he's not mad at you. Amen. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the cross. Just going to do a couple more songs and then my part will be done. Uh, I don't know which one I want to do. Let's do this one. Here's one you can kind of tap your feet to. Seems I get the right one here. Amen. <laughs> Well, 
go at the very end, and it's uh, it's an Easter message that I did. It's got three or four songs on it, and it comes at the low, low price of zero. Now, can you beat that? But seriously, take one with you, and if you don't want to listen to it, if you're already saved, give it to somebody that needs to hear the cross message, that needs to hear the Easter message. And it's got, like I said, it's got some songs on it, so it's yours. If you want one, just take one with you. How about that? Can't be a deal like that. I'm going to do this song here. This song, uh, especially in this, it's, it's crazy how... Songs mean something in one era, and as time goes on, they seem to even mean more in a, in a more modern era. I, I can remember Brother Ray back in the, uh, I started playing drums in 69 with my grandparents' group, the Bethany Quartet, back, way back in the day. And, uh, you know, as a teenager, I can remember when songs like Redemption Draws Nigh was written. And, and uh, things of that nature. And, and, and now you look back and you think, wow, that's a long time ago. But how current are those songs even today? Yeah. Amen. We're at a time right now that, that uh, I've never seen before. And probably nobody's seen these times, probably if you, unless you lived through the Depression. Things of that matter. But uh, you know what? I still know that God still is going to see us through. He's going to do what he has to do to get us through this mess. I believe that with all my heart. I believe, why do I believe that? Because I believe that's what the Bible tells us. But I know from day to day, we all have problems. We all have issues. And if you don't think you have an issue, then you need to go through this all. Because you've got an issue. you got an issue if you think you don't have an issue. But whatever the issue is, seriously, he's going to make it way for you. Amen. How many, how many knows that he's, he's already made a way for you so far? So like the old guy says, he's not going to bring you this far just to let you go. I want to do this song. And I, and I believe the words of this song. Hopefully it touched somebody's heart tonight. Amen.
trust me when I say that Jesus loves you, he will make a way. Jesus loves you, he will make a way. Listen, don't you dare give up. so glad to have you with us tonight. I remember the day I married you and Miss Robin. I believe your colors was red because it was around Christmas time, wasn't it? Amen. Well, you're still just as handsome now as you were back then. Amen. Amen. Well, this next fella here you're going to hear preach tonight, Brother Ray, most of you know him. I'd just like to say I love him. He's been a mentor to me when it comes to spiritual matters. He's helped me and we have talked on the phone several times, and he does this when I call. <laughs> now he says, now you're going to make me study. But uh, last night I said this, in the next two days, you're liable to hear some things that maybe you've not heard before. Amen? Amen? And you know what? We might hear something tonight, tonight we've never heard before, but I can assure you this. It'll come out of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And I thank God for Brother Ray. He's been a blessing to me. He does. He and Mike both, they do so much in this church that a lot of people are not even aware of. But preaching is one thing Brother Ray does, and we're waiting on Brother Mike. Amen? And uh, <laughs> But anyway, I want you to make Brother Ray welcome tonight and cheer him on. Say amen. All right? Turn him on. Oh, that's she's in control. <laughs> well, can you hear me okay? All righty. Usually I can hear this thing thump. Well, Brother Carl was saying he didn't like the middle picture over here. I'm a little irritated. <laughs> Tim said we was all looking pretty good. Amen. I'm glad to see you tonight. I hope you come to have fun. I did. Uh, this uh, you've heard this joke uh, before. It's it's an old joke, but uh, some of you haven't heard it. Uh, this couple they were traveling through Louisiana, and uh, they was going through Nacogdoches, and they started arguing with each other. How in the world do you pronounce that? And they just argued and argued, and they just decided they'd stop and get them something to eat. And they went in the restaurant, and they walked up to the counter, and the fellow said, uh, uh, "Listen, before we order our food, could you please do something and settle an argument for us?" Could you please tell us very slowly where we're at right now? And the, and the guy leaned over the counter and he went, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, it's good to see you laugh. Good to see you laugh this, today. Uh, turn to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. <clears throat> I've got several verses. I'm not going to read a whole chapter or anything. But Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. I really enjoyed Brother Rick. Yes, sir. Yes. Brother Rick sings from his heart, from his soul. I like it. Some people just sing. Brother Rick sings. <laughs> Brother, he, he's a singer, not a singer. I like that. <laughs> Amen. Genesis, Genesis 6. Verse 8, And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just and perfect in, uh, in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Verse 14, And God said, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. In verse, uh, chapter 7, and uh, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For I have seen, 
For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And in verse 16, And they went in, went in, male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Chapter 8, verse 1, And God remembered Noah. I like that. A lot of things right there that I like. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Did you ever look at somebody and uh, Brother Bobby Dunn comes here. He's been here in a while, but that man's eyes, they smile. I said that before. They do. And there's some people, you know, that uh, they just do that. Some people, they look like uh, they're bewildered. My mom used to say, Raymond, are you feel okay? And I said, yeah. She said, well, you look funny out of your eyes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't find guilt. He didn't find condemnation. He didn't find that God was angry with him. He found grace. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, and God said, you know what? Noah, he was an honest man, integrity. Got a lot of good character. That kind of reminds me, uh, years ago, I used to tell Brother Mike, I, I said, I believe that, you know what? Christianity, really, is like that old fella down there in the hills and hollers of Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia. You know, he's saved. He just loves God. Loves his family, does right, and doesn't hurt anybody, just tries to help them. The simplicity that's in Christ. That's what that's about. And Noah was, uh, had a good character and had integrity. And uh, God tells him, uh, you know what? Noah, the earth is violent. And it's just, it's a sewer. It's horrible. I'm going to destroy it. You know what? It's amazing that this world is still in existence tonight. It, this world is crazy, honey. People running around. That's, ooh, almost said, uh, almost said stupid, but I won't say that. That ignorant uh, governor in Michigan won't call a woman a woman. She's a birthing person. I got news for you, honey. My mama was a woman. This verse we just read said male and female went into that ark. Not 212 genders like they're trying to say. It's a wonder God hadn't just already sent Jesus back. Go get them, son. Get them out of there and I'll just end this thing up. The world's crazy. Noah, I'm going to end it. And I want you to build an ark. And you know what? Noah, Noah believed God when God said uh, he was going to destroy the earth. He believed him. And God said, I want you to go build an ark and, and pitch it on the inside and pitch it on the outside. What that means is coat it. There, that's kind of a tarry substance that was to be used so they wouldn't have any leaks. By the way, that word uh, pitch, it's the same Hebrew word for atonement. Back in the Old Testament, sins were covered over by the blood of bulls and goats. In the New Testament, hey, Christ took it away. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ took it away, took sin away. You ought to be happy about that right now. Noah believed God, bless the Lord. He said, okay, I'll build it. And I'll, I'll pitch it in and I'll pitch it out. And I like over there then where God says, Noah, come on in. Come on in. To the, he invites him into the ark. He doesn't say, Noah, get in that ark. Noah could have turned away and walked away. Noah had built, been working on that ark for 100 years. He was a, a preacher for 120 years and nobody believed him. Noah could have said, you know what? This might just be a bunch of hooey. But nope, he got in the ark. And I like that God invited him. Not like some Calvinists will say, well, you ain't got no say-so over it. Nuh -uh. Noah could have turned away. He could have walked away. Yes, but he, he goes in. And I like that God shuts him in. Amen. You're okay now, Noah. I've got you right where I want you. Got you right where I want you. So Noah goes in and he's shut in. And, and then I like over there in chapter 8, verse 1. God remembers Noah. Yeah. He didn't forget him. I like that song, brother. Uh, I can't think of the phrase now. I was trying to remember you were singing it. Uh, God remembers us. God remembers. He came for us. He came for you. He loves you. He loves me. That's good. Noah believed God. That's one of our problems tonight. We don't believe God. We believe a bunch of junk. We believe a bunch of tradition. But we don't believe God. We don't believe what this book says in some places. Amen. If I, I, Tim picks his Bible up, I can't. My, my stuff will fall all over the floor. See, he's neat. Uh, he's neat. I'm not. Uh, 
You know, when, when God told Noah to build an ark, he had a plan. He had a plan. And when, uh, when the, uh, God sent his son, he had a plan. And without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Jesus came to die, shed his blood to take away our sin, to make us safe and secure. Once we get in him, safe and secure. God invites us to come on. Whosoever will can come to the Lord. Whosoever will. All, I've just read uh, recently about, uh, there's several verses that says that. God's not desiring that any should perish. There's another verse that says that he tasted death for all men. Not just the elect. All men. And you know what? We're supposed to believe that. Yeah. Did you know that the word belief or trust is in the Bible? 573 times I believe it is. I think that sounds like God's kind of interested in belief. I don't know about you. Belief is important. It's paramount. It's paramount. God remembers Noah. He'll remember us. And he'll say, guess what? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't care how many times we mess up. He's going to still say that to us one day. He's going to hug us around the neck. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of his salvation. It's his salvation. Amen. You know what? Before we were called Christians, you know what we were called? Believers. Amen. Huh? That Christian name is supposed to be derogatory. No, we were called believers. We were called believers. I'm trying to get you to see the importance of believing tonight before we get to where we're going. <clears throat> Let me tell you a little bit about me. Tim's been lying. No, he hasn't. Uh, Tim's been talking about me, you know, uh, last night and a little bit tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about me. Well, I was about 10 or 11 years old and I got saved. Uh, vacation Bible School, Mrs. Holcroft, Green Gospel Temples, second floor, scared to death, you know, but I wanted Jesus. I wanted to get saved. I didn't want to go to hell. So I got saved. I asked, I asked him to save me. And guess what he did? Ha! Saved me! That's why I like to use they say, saved, honey. No on that ark. I bet he was saying, saved. People outside wasn't. I got saved when I was 10 or 11 years old. And for 30 years, for 30 years, I'd be active in church. Uh, we had a thing called Christian Service Brigade. It was usually for uh, kids like 12 on up uh, for, for the boys. The girls were had pioneer girls. And anyway, I went to that and I got involved in that. You had your uniform, you know, and we'd stand in formation. And uh, 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 it, was, it was something. They would teach us different things. That's where I learned how to iron. A man, the, the leader by the name of Duke Harry taught me how to iron clothes. That's why I look so pretty tonight, Carl. <laughs> oh! And then I went on to be active in the, in the youth group. You know, the teenagers. And uh, uh, I don't know if you guys were familiar with this, but they had, back then they had the Baptist, uh, Baptist Youth Fellowship. And the, uh, the teen departments from different various Baptist churches, they'd meet at different churches each month. And we'd go there and we'd, do, we'd have that. And I remember what we'd have them over there at Breed Gospel Temple. And I don't know why I remember this, but I'm upstairs and I'm helping pass out sandwiches. And man, I felt that was so good. This is our group, our church, you know, this is cool. And when they also had, you know what a sword drill is? Anybody? Raise your hand if you do. Sword drill? Okay. Uh, we used to have those too. What they do is they would... Uh, uh, a member from each youth group, from each church, would come up on the platform. One of the youth directors then would read off a verse, like John 3, 16 or something, and the first one to find it, stand up, and you got to read it. We had this girl. She was Grease Lightning. Her name was Sandy Coon. I tell you what, he couldn't hardly get it out of his mouth, and she was on her feet. Uh, it was fun, you know, and uh, a lot of good things back then. And then uh, I'd go on, and, you know, I became a song leader, and uh, eventually, Ellen and I, we had the youth uh, the uh, teenagers, we had the youth, and uh, eventually uh, I ended up also teaching the young married couples, and uh, that was good too. We, uh, we became almost like family. We'd go have volleyball games, we'd go on outings and picnics, and those volleyball games were good too. We didn't play that sissy stuff. No, no. You could get in the net, you could go over the net. We had one guy get his arm broke, <laughs> we had another gal, she got hit right the head with a spike ball, she just fell like timber. It was fun. It was fun, yes. Oh, the young married couples class. And you know what? I was 30 years. But let me tell you something. I didn't know it then. I know it now. I was in a legalistic church. A legalistic church. Would have never, never knew it. Uh, you say, what's a legalistic church? 
That's a church that teaches, oh, if you do good, you'll get good. If you do bad, you'll get bad. God will be mad at you. If you sin, God's going, you're out of fellowship. You've got to confess them sins to get them taken away. You're backslid. And if you keep it up, God will chastise you. And you really keep it up, he'll just take you on home early. A legalistic church. A legalistic church is, bases everything on performance and sin. On performance and sin. On performance and sin. Ah, let me just help you with a couple things. The word backslide, Brother Tim touched on this last night. The word backslide is not in the New Testament. Woo! All these years you've heard back, you thought sometimes you was backslid, didn't you? It's not in the New Testament. It's in the Old Testament. And you know what it refers to? It refers only to Israel. And only to Israel when they went out and left God and started serving idols. That's what backslide was about. And let me help you encourage you. You can't not get out of fellowship with God. Amen. Jesus Christ is in you. And I'm in Him. You can't get out of fellowship with Him. And as far as confessing sin, uh, to get them taken away, boy, I wish I could spend a lot of time on this because people really just need to hear uh, you know, 1 John 1, 9, Oh, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A couple things wrong with that. First thing, that verse is for lost people. It's not for saved people. It's not of our soap to get cleaned up with. Another thing is this. If, as Hebrews 10 says, you get sanctified once, perfected once, cleansed once, all sins forgiven once, what happened there? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteous. Well, how did I get dirty again? And by the way, Hebrews uh, 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 17 uh, and 18, there's two verses there. It says, and, his, and their sins and iniquities while I remember no more. So there's a lot of Christians running around night confessing sin that God don't have a clue what you're talking about. He forgot them. That don't set well with religion. That don't set well with the legalist. This is the truth. It's in the book. It's in the book. I'll probably tag it again in a minute. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so, I'm in, this, I'm in this legalistic church. And it goes, now listen, it got worse. And you thought what I just told you was bad? It got worse, honey. Let me see. I can't really see real good from up here. But did you know that it got worse? No slacks on women. It was a sin. No long hair on men. And then it got into a, a debate as to what was long. Uh, no polyester and cotton. No wire rim glasses, no card playing, no TV, no music, no movies, no mixed swimming. They used to call it bathing. I don't know why. <laughs> on and on. And the rules kept coming. The rules kept coming. I went out and burned albums out in my backyard, a stack of albums, because I wasn't supposed to listen to them. Couldn't watch, certain, couldn't watch TV, really, unless it was the news. That was about it. Couldn't go to movies. Sin, sin, sin. And, the, and I tried, I did all that stuff. And the more I tried, the worse it got, the bar got higher, the rules kept coming. I couldn't stand it. And finally said, I quit it. Discouraged. Disappointed. Depressed. I quit. I ain't doing this no more. Something inside of me, the Holy Spirit, said it ain't right. It ain't right. I got to that place. Uh, and I've since learned that there's several men that reached that same point. A man by the name of Bob George, Classic Christianity, Andrew Farley, Joseph Prince, uh, Bob Christopher got to that point. They was trying to do it all, do it all, do it all, couldn't do it. Uh, Andrew Farley laid on the floor and cried. Uh, Bob, Chris, uh, uh, Bob George pulled over at the highway in Dallas and bawled like a baby. He's doing everything he could to try to please God, get better with God, get good on God's good side. It didn't, doesn't, it didn't work then, it doesn't work now, and if you're trying it, you might as well sit down and quit. You might as well sit down and quit, honey, because I'll tell you right now, it's a dead end road. I quit! And for 25 years, no church. I was done. I had enough of that mess. I was done 25 years. Oh, we'd go once in a while, you know. Let me tell you this, I got to tell you. One time, me and Mike, uh, Dr. Mundy, we went to visit a church out west. Uh, a little country church out there. We'd heard, you know, blah, blah. We thought we'd go out and check it out. Uh, I don't remember the message. It wasn't impressive. And after we was done, the, the pastor came up to us. He, he, uh, the three of us, he looked us up, down, brown. He said, he asked this question. I couldn't believe this. What are y'all doing here? <laughs> well, thought we came to church. I'm not sure. Honesty, I'm, I'm, if I'm lying, I'm dying. 
You remember that? Crazy. 25 years, didn't go to, didn't go to church, didn't go to church. And uh, I, do not, I know it's the Holy Spirit that moved me. Uh, it used to be my habit to get up in the mornings, and I would drink coffee, read the newspaper, mostly the comics and the Zodiac. <laughs> Zodiac, by the way, is a bunch of hooey. And I would do that every morning and then go to work. One morning, I do not know why, what instigated or got me going there. But I said, okay, God, I'll quit reading the newspaper. And I ain't giving up coffee. Don't get, you know, let's don't get too serious. I'll, 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 I'll quit reading the newspaper and I'll start reading my Bible and I'll start studying. I think God grinned real big that morning. Amen. I didn't have a clue what was ahead of me. And I started studying. Started studying. <clears throat> Probably the first book that I ever read that rocked my world. Classic Christianity by Bob George. Things in there that I was never taught in a legalistic church. Right. Truth from the Bible. Uh, I, I, can't get, I can't go on and on with that. Uh, it just was good. It was freeing, simple to read. And, and uh, how Bob George went through the very same uh, experiences that I had. And, and uh, uh, he's got other works and, and has videos and so forth. Another book that I read. And I'm not sure, but Dr. Mundy may have given me this book. Grace, the Glorious Theme by Louis Speary Schaefer, Dr. Louis Speary Schaefer. He was a founder of Dallas Theological Seminary. Man. Now, he's wrong on 1 John 1, 9. Let me throw that in. But here's what he... Uh, it, this was so plain, so obvious, how I missed it, and how some of you probably have missed it. Is a, it amazed me. I couldn't believe it. Dr. Schaefer attacks this from inside outside, top side, bottom side, left, right, whatever. That, now listen to, I'm going to lose some of you right here. I promise you that. The law, the law, the 613 Mosaic laws were given to Israel only. That includes the Decalogue, which is the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments and the Decalogue, and the, or the Decalogue and the, the 613 laws have nothing to do with Christianity. Nothing to do with Christianity. That belongs to the Jewish people. And if you don't believe me, honey, go back and look at Exodus 18 and 19 and see who's camped there at the foot of Mount Sinai. There wasn't a Chinese guy in the group. They were all Jewish. God's covenant was with the Jewish people. Romans 2.14, uh, Paul says, And the Gentiles which have not the law. Ephesians 2, 11 and 12, and the Gentiles which have not a covenant with God. We never did. Uh, and people get upset with that. They want to post the Ten Commandments. Why in the world would you want to post something that, listen to me, has no salvation, never helped anybody, it's condemning, and it has nothing to do with Christianity. If you want to post a verse, how about John 3, 16, for God so loved you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but that sounds better than thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. There was no answer to that, and that was for the Jewish people. Now that upsets religions. That upsets legalists. And I'm sorry that it does, but guess what? Go argue with God. It was His plan. He, he had them there camped at Mount Sinai. Nobody else. So I began to study. And... Uh, those two fellows, and then this one here is my mentor. You can see probably that it's a little on the ragged side. I do have a hardback that I found at Half Price Bookstore, and I will not mark in it. This one here, you cannot open this to a page without being awestruck. This book, this man is my mentor. You know him one way. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. William R. Newell wrote that song. William R. Newell as a youth was troubled youth. His dad was a pastor. He talked to D.L. Moody and got him in up there on the, on the stipulation that William R. Newell would meet with D.L. Moody every afternoon. DL, uh, uh, William R. Newell went on to be the assistant superintendent of D.L. Moody Institute. If, you're going, if somebody's here thinking about going to seminary, don't. If you're out there and you're thinking about going to cemetery, seminary, don't. 
Get you a copy of this book, save your money, and I'm telling you right now, and it also has Hebrews verse by verse. If you're a serious Bible student, this book, I cannot say enough about this book. Phenomenal. Those, and then there was other men that I read, articles that I, I, that I have, and, and uh, lots, of, lots of different books, but those are really the, the main ones. I would, uh, J.N. Darby. Uh, if you didn't know this, J.N. Darby is the one that figured out the rapture. You thought it always was known. That was in 1827 to 1828, December to January. He was uh, thrown off a horse and injured, and he got to study in the Word of God. The rapture, you could, that's where he came from. That's how, why we know it now. I read him. I read William Coates. Uh, I'm sorry, William Kelly. And then there's Coates and Grant and Hodges and Bullitt and Stoney. And even Joseph Prince. Now, Joseph Prince is off on some stuff, but when it comes to grace... Uh, he's right on. And I've let, watched some of the way he phrases some things. I think he's read some of these fellows that I have. Anyway, what happened to Ray? He found grace. He found grace. He found grace. In 2008, uh, in 2008, let me say that study period was about 15 years. I might as well go ahead and say this. I was going to leave this out, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. In, the, uh, in 10 years of that 15, the latter part of that 15, 10 years, Brother Mike, Dr. George Mundy, and myself met every Monday and every Friday at a pub on West 10th Street and studied the Word of God. We had our Bibles. We had our books. We had our papers. We, we discussed. We debated. We argued. That, if you want to call a seminary, that's where I had... I wish I had a DVD of it. We had... People would listen to us. We wasn't loud and, and so forth. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. Have you ever, you know, we wasn't obnoxious. But boy, you know me. I'd like to go, where you at, Kim? Woo! <laughs> you ever try to do that and not do that in a bar? <laughs> I bet I turned red and steam came out of my ear. And also, I would sit there at that table as we would discuss the sweet, blessed grace of God. And I would go, I'm just so amazed I'm amazed. Oh, God, how sweet he is, how good he is, and how I'd been buffaloed for 30 years. We had people stop by the table and, say, and ask us questions. We had a bartender. Uh, uh, she was a bartender, and she came over, and she said, I know what you guys do, and I got this problem. Would you do what you do? She meant pray. Had another waitress come over, and she sat down and talked to us. Tears run down her face and told us about her life and how she... People would listen. One of my favorite songs is by Aaron Watson. Words in it are great. I met Jesus in a bar. I know that's wow in some of you. If you got past the Ten Commandments thing and, and this part, you're still with me, I guess. Okay? Oh! 2008, I started praying. I said, Lord, would you raise up a grace preaching church in the Plainfield, Avon area and let them have a fiery preacher and let them have traditional and southern gospel music. Four years I prayed that prayer. In 2012, Brother Tim come by our office, Mike and I's office, and said, fellas, I'm over there at Cathedral of Prayer and I'm going to be preaching. We said, we'll be there. And you know the rest. Here we are. You're sitting tonight in a grace preaching church, a place of grace, a place of grace that preaches the gospel of grace. What's the gospel of grace? Gospel means good tidings. What's grace? Unmerited favor of God. Yeah. Huh? The good tidings of the unmerited favor of God. That's what we preach here. We preach the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You trust in him. You, you just... Uh, oh, I like that word, deliver. Ah, I was telling Brother Tim about this. You know, in deliver... That means to hand over. You know, if, if uh, they say a, a mother, you know, she delivers a child, she's handing that child over. Huh? I'm glad the day that Jesus delivered me over yes. to the Father. I'm seated in heaven right now. You didn't know this. Oh, we are. We are. We're already there in God's mind. He sees eternity. Ah, but you know what holds folks back? It's, it's not sin. Most folks say, oh, it's sin. You know, it's sin holds it back. No, it's unbelief. It's unbelief. That's what holds Christians back. That's what holds lost people back. Lost people are looking at all their sins and everything they've done. God done took them away. He's not caring about them anymore. What do you think Jesus did at the cross? Anyway, if they would just see that all they got to do is believe. 
entrust themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver themselves over to Him. Here I am, Lord. Save me. And they'll get saved. Christian needs to learn that too. Grace. The unmerited. And I like this. The unearned favor of God. Grace is God acting freely with no obligations to fill. Grace knows no debt. There's no demerits in grace. There's no merits in grace. You can't do anything. You can't bribe God. You say, Lord, I've read the Bible through three times this year. Well, good. That's nice. But you didn't get any points with the Lord. It's grace. It's grace. Folks think that their performance helps them, ingratiates them to the Lord. It doesn't. He already loves you. He can't love, he can't love me anymore tonight. Than he already does. I don't care, Carl. That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it's unearned. Say unearned. unearned. That's what grace is. Unearned. I want to talk to you now tonight real quick, if I can, about uh, grace. The purpose of grace. The power of grace. The peace of grace. And the praise of grace. And I'll try to move quickly so you listen fast also, okay? Uh, what's the purpose of grace? Save me. That's what the purpose of grace is, to save me. That's why Jesus came. Salvation. Whosoever will can get saved, can get in. Noah, come on, get in the boat. Come on, Noah, get in the boat. If you're lost tonight, come on, get in the boat. Christ is the ark. Come on in. Come on in. And also, uh, the purpose of grace is for Christian living. It's about a relationship with the Lord, not about rules. Amen. Not about rules, not about performance. No. That's what the purpose of grace is, the simplicity that's in Christ. That old country boy down there in the hills in the holler that, you know, loves the Lord. He's saved, loves the Lord, loves his family, treats his neighbors right, and tries to help out. Simplicity that's in Christ. We have made it so complex, it is sad. You, I'm thankful tonight that I know the grace of God. And I'm trying to share what I have discovered through study uh, in more than 25 years now. Because if you count when I'm back then, I've got that's a 77, I've sat 67 years experience in this. I already been down that legalistic road. I ain't going back. Ellen was telling me that last night. She said, mm -mm. or today, I can't remember. She said, no, ain't going back to that mess. No. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin and from religion. And from religion. That song gave me the old time religion. Mm -mm, not me, baby. No, don't want the old time religion. I'll take grace any day of the week. Amen. Purpose of grace to save me. Ah, oh, tell you what. You know what I was thinking about Noah too. Uh, he, he's there in the ark, you know, and they, God sealed him in and, you know, it's going along. And Noah calls his boys over, you know, Shem and uh, Ham and Japheth. He says, fellas, we, uh, we got a problem here. And, uh, uh, and uh, Japheth, you're going to take the first turn at this. He said them stables need cleaning out. <laughs> now this is all speculation, okay. But I got to make this next point, so I had to make something up. <laughs> oh, so he said, okay, got to clean out them stables. Can you hear it now? Oh, Dad. Now, <clears throat> Noah was 600 years old, so I assume the boys are probably hitting around 100 by then. Uh, but anyway, he said, boys, you got to do that. You know what? Noah said, you got to take the trash out. <laughs> when I got in studying the grace, I found out that I need to take the trash out. God's not mad at me. I'm not out of fellowship. Sin's not a threat to my spirit. Amen. Now it'll mess this flesh up. If I go rob a bank, I'll get shot and it's going to hurt my flesh, etc. Oh, but I had to take the trash out. Uh, communion. Oh, there was times I didn't take communion. If you've got sin in your life, don't take communion. I got news for you, buttercup. Jesus said, Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me, yes. not your mess. Amen. Communion's not about sin, it's about the Savior. Amen. I had to take the trash out. I had to figure out, I didn't have to confess it. Oh, let me say this while I'm right there. Did you know no place in the New Testament does it say that a Christian or anybody is supposed to ask for forgiveness of sin? Yeah. Really? Can you see? It, it just, legalism just gets ridiculous. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I had to take the trash out. I had to take the trash out. You know, Christians, they're not nasty and dirty. No. You know what Paul did? Uh, over there in Romans, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, you know what he did? He said, when he's writing those books, he said, to the saints, to the saints, 
He didn't say to the backsliders. He didn't say to the sinners. He didn't say to you lousy Christians, you bad Christians, you low-down Christians, you uncaring Christians. He said to the saints. You know what a saint is? Saint is a holy one. You're a saint tonight. Listen to me. You're a child of the Most High God. I said you're a child of the Most High God. Ladies, you're a daughter of the Most High God. Not dirty, not filthy. Nuh uh. Jesus took care of everything. Amen. Amen. Paul also said over there in Galatians 2 21, he said, I don't frustrate the grace of God. He said, if rules work, Christ died in vain. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Uh, words don't work. You can confess till the cows come home, but you ain't doing nothing. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. It takes the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like over there in Romans 6, 14, uh, Paul says this. Now watch this. He says, you're not under law, but under grace. My mentor brought this out to me. If you notice, it says under law. He doesn't say under the Mosaic law. He says under law. Paul is saying, you're not under any law principle. It's not about keeping rules and regulations. It's about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul's saying. We're not under law. Take out the trash. Take out the trash. Oh, the purpose of grace is to save me, to save me, and uh, to save my soul, and, and to deliver, to, li to deliver the Christian life, to deliver the Christian from a life of crap. Whoa. I'm sorry, that's an acronym. C-R-A. That's Christian Rules and Performance. Take out the trash. Paul had all these credentials. He said, I was a Pharisee. I was born in the tribe of Benjamin. I was this. I was that. I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He said, I count it all for dung. Crap. That I might know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I like this next verse. He said, that I might know the power of his resurrection. See, a lot of this stuff about sin and all this, stuff, there's a bunch of stuff out there that just distracts from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a distraction. If the devil can bring it up and get you off on some stupid thing, and there's a lot of stupid things out there, believe me. Uh, regardless, uh, n don't even, nevertheless about sin, and people are scared to death of sin. Oh, but the, pow the power, uh, purpose of grace. Huh. And then there's the power of grace. Power of grace. Oh, he made him to be sin who knew no sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. You talk about the power of grace. I didn't have a thing to do with that. Let me help you with something this tonight. Now this is going to shock your ears too, probably some of you. Do you know that you're just as righteous as Jesus Christ? Scary to think that. That's what God said. He said, I've made you the righteousness of God in Christ. Wow. Power. Power. Grace. I did nothing. I did nothing to get it. Amen. I'm getting exercise. I'm going to do Pilates next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the power of grace. I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. You, me, we're accepted in the beloved tonight. It's not about us. It's not about rules. It's not about performance. It's not about behavior. It's about the beloved. Amen. What he did on Calvary and took everything out of the way that was in the way. That thing that's gnawing at you, he's already handled it and taken it out of the way. That's the power of grace. I am a Christian. And I'd like to add this. I am a believer. I'm a believer. You know, a lot of things call themselves a Christian that ain't. And I'll leave that alone. I'm trying to be ugly. I mean, nice. Uh, I got a new identity. I'm a saint. I'm a holy man. I'm a child of God. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. I've been pitched. Sealed on the inside, outside. Oh, I like this verse. I'll use it again here in a minute too. Uh, 1 John 3, 5. He was manifest to take away sin. And in him is no sin. Guess where I'm at tonight? I'm in him. If I'm in him... And there ain't no sin in him. Guess what? There ain't no sin in my spirit. Clean. Oh, clean. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Sins are over. They're gone. Uh, there's no leaks. Ain't one going to slip in. No leaks. No contamination. And this scares people too. There's no judgment left for the Christian. 
I know you've heard, oh, and you get up there, God's going to bring up everything you've ever done, everything you've ever thought, and everything you've ever said, and every place you've ever been. Yeah, the whole world's going to know it. Oh, hogwash. You say, what about the Bema seed? That's an award ceremony. Huh? He's going to come down there and shake Mike's hand and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come on into the joys of thy Lord. It's an award ceremony. Bema seed's not nothing to be afraid of. No. No. It's all God's doing. I did nothing. Unearned favor of God. It's God's grace. It's God's salvation. It's God keeping me. I'm not keeping me. Oh, and grace, once for, and grace once given is never withdrawn. Never withdrawn. You can't bribe God. He won't withdraw it. You can't get the merits. Demerits. You can't get merits. That's grace. That's grace. Christ delivered. I'm delivered from sin's power. I'm delivered from sin's power. Purpose of grace, save me. Power of grace, to change me. Make me the righteousness of God in Christ. The peace of grace, I like this one. Do you know what Noah's name means? Rest or resting. Take your pick. That's what his name means. Can't you see him in that boat, ark? You know, I mean, this thing's going like this and like this and you know, and so forth. Noah, he's just sitting there drinking coffee, reading newspaper and the Zodiac. <laughs> By the way, the Zodiac is just a bunch of hooey. And probably reading mainly the comics. But he's sitting there, he's resting. I don't think Noah's worried about, oh my goodness, we're going to spring a leak, going to spring a leak. Most Christians are running around scared to death. They're going to spring a leak. Sin's going to get in and they're going to lose their salvation. Or they're going to be out of fellowship with God. Not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. That thing about losing your salvation, that didn't start till the 1500s. And while I'm at it, and there's nothing wrong with altar calls, but did you know, and I've just read this this week, and I think Brother uh, Tim's touched on this before, that you know where the uh, altar calls started with? Billy Sunday. <laughs> About that time. Billy Sunday. Before then, they didn't exist. Anyway, that's free. Won't charge anything. Okay. Oh, but here's Noah. He's in the middle of the storm. You know, and he's sitting there resting. And these waves are crashing in, and that boat's just going everywhere. They sent us to Vietnam. My whole outfit went together. We were in a battalion. They took an old uh, a freighter and tried to turn it into a troop transport. And, you know, we pull out of the bay there in California. And, man, these guys are getting sick, and I'm doing pretty good. You know, I thought, this is good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be okay. We hadn't got out of the bay yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Up and down. And back. I was going down the hallway, and the hallway's like this. Oh, sicker than a dog, honey. Well, we had the cooks, and they were holding on to plumbing, trying to, cook, you know. And then we tried to go downstairs to get some relief and lay down. Oh, they wouldn't let you do that. Get up on deck. Oh, good, so I can watch all this stuff, you know, first thing. Oh, that didn't help either. The only thing that helped was getting off that boat. Oh, but here's Noah. He's down there, and the raves are crashing, and they're, they're beating against that. You know what? Those waves had a job. Yeah. Noah. You still believe in God? The waves are crashing. You can hear them. The boat's being tossed about. The waves had a job to do, Noah. You still believe in God? Let me ask you this. Do you still believe, do you still, do you remember, do you remember your last storm? Huh? Do you remember your last storm? You know that thing, you didn't think you'd make it through the night. You didn't think, you didn't know what you was going to do. Maybe a child was sick. Maybe a bill was due. Something had a wreck. I don't know. Something happened. Catastrophe in your life. And you didn't know if you was going to make it or not. And then God. And then God. Oh, how many of you have been through a storm? Amen. Amen. Just about every hand. Bless your hearts, the ones that have, and it's coming. But guess what? Raise your hand again. You've been through a storm. And look at us. We're here. We made it. We made it. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Who would take a poor lost sinner, lift him from the miry clay, set him free. Hallelujah. Yep. Oh, he was there. Yep, he was there. Hallelujah. The waves were crashing. I didn't know what I was going to do, but the Lord came along. And you know what? To experience, there's nothing like it. Because when you experience a storm, when the next one comes along, you'll remember, I went through that storm. God took care of me there. I got that experience. Hallelujah. He'll take care of me this time too. He'll deliver me this time. Yes, no arrested, no arrested. Experience gives you hope. God made a way last time you survived. You might be in a storm right now. Don't forget what God taught you in the storm. 
This is for me too, I'll guarantee you. Let me say that. The message I preached before I got COVID, and it bothered me. He has delivered, he is delivering, and he will deliver. I thought, oh, Lord. And then I ended up, you know, 12 days in the hospital and a few months of recovery. But he's delivered. Amen. He's delivered. I'm still resting in him. Call me Noah. I'm still resting in That's your grandson's name. Noah. Amen. Oh, don't forget what God taught you in the storm. I can't say you'll never cry. I can't say you'll never ask God why. I can't say you'll never be alone. Oh, but I can say, I can say, the sun will shine again. The sun will shine again. And I can say, you're in a fight. You're bound to win. Grace, grace, God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4, 9 says there's a, uh, there's a rest that remains for the children of God. There is a rest. There is a rest. A lot of folks aren't there. Uh, no arrested. No leaks. No leaks. Many Christians are scared to death of, of sin. I'm serious. Scared, terrified. Don't know what to do. Sin here, sin over there, sin, sin, sin. By the way, uh, I have a list of 667 sins, and I'm assuming you probably committed one today. <laughs> Just a hunch. You better know what it is if you've got to confess it to get forgiven. I sell that copy for $100 a piece. It's okay. <clears throat> oh! They're scared to death of sin. I always use these three verses whenever I preach, most likely. 1 Peter 2, 24. Jesus bears sin away. Hebrews 9, 26. Jesus put sin away. 1 John 3, 5. He was manifest to take sin sin away. Are you listening to what the Word says? Now that's Bible. That's what Jesus did with sin. And Christians are running around scared to death of it, terrified of it. Now yes, your flesh is going to sin, but not your spirit. Yeah. Not your spirit. And your flesh will suffer from it. But not your spirit. But not your spirit. Amen. Sins are not the problem. Unbelief is. Yes, not believing those verses I just told you about. That's right. You know, I don't have peace tonight because of my performance. I don't. I got peace because I believe. Amen. I believe what God said, what His grace has done. It's not up to me to float my boat. No, Jesus already done everything. He's taken care of everything. And by the way, Jesus didn't die to give me a job. He didn't die to give me a set of rules, disciplines, regulations. He died to set me free, to save my soul, to get me to, get, to get me to heaven, and for me to have life and life more abundant. And you will never have life more abundant as long as you're looking over your shoulder because you think God's mad at you and God's angry at you. That's not God and that's not grace. Because what you're doing is you're depending upon your efforts and your works to keep you blessed. You know you're blessed whether you're not, you, no matter what. What is it? Uh, uh, highly favored, greatly blessed, and deeply loved. That's me. That's you too. If you're saved. Oh, I'm resting peacefully in His grace. His unearned favor. Unearned. Say unearned. Oh, I got weak on me. You must have lost you on the something. Ten Commandments or the Confession of Sin. One of the two. Take your pick. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what God says. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm contradicting what most of us were taught. I said I spent 30. I said 30. I said 30. Let me say it again. 30 years in that mess. 30 years. Oh. Purpose of grace to save me, the power of grace to change me, peace of grace to give me rest. Then there's the praise of grace. I am a Christian. I'm delivered. I've been handed over to God. I've been handed over to God. I'm saved. I'm thankful for it. I praise Him for it. God remembered Noah. Genesis 8.1. God remembers Ray. Psalm 104, 13, that Ray is nothing but dust. He knows my frame. He knew before I was ever born what I was going to do and not do. Same with you. You don't believe me? Go back over and read about uh, Nathaniel. Uh, Nathaniel said, well, I asked Jesus, what do you know about me? Jesus said, before you ever got here, I saw you sitting over there under the tree. 
wowed him. God knew exactly how we would be. Still he came and still he saved us. And I've never disappointed God. Let me also say, I like to say this once in a while, about chastisement. You know, they say, oh, if you sin, God's going to chasten you for that. <clears throat> it always amazes me that chastisement, that means God's going to punish you. He's going to slap you, beat you, punch you, something. It always amazes me that chastisement always has to be something cat uh, catastrophic. You have a car wreck, you know, the baby dies, uh, you know, the house burns down. Why can't it be the light bulb burn out? Or the water faucet started dripping? You know, I've got to fix both of them. Why can't that be chastised? It's because it doesn't exist. Chastisement, look that word up. That means teach. God has taught me a lot of things. I don't know everything, but what I do know, I know. And God has taught me, but he's never slapped me around. I'm 77, and God has never slapped me, beat me, whatever. We've been told about, take the trash out. Take the trash out. On your hey, I'll tell you what. Next trash day, ours is Thursday. When you take the trash out, think of that, would you? I need to get some trash out of my life. The lies I've been told. By the way, there's some books up here that says Twisted Scriptures. You need to maybe take a look at that. There's one, uh, um, Steve McVeigh. I can't tell. 52 lies you've been told every Sunday. There's some stuff up here, buddy, you may have to, might want to know. That sets you free. Instead of looking over your shoulder, thinking God's going to whoop you. Going to hurt you. Going to make you have a wreck. I, used, I remember there was times I'd go into a building, I'd look where the exit sign was. I was afraid God could catch this building on fire. I want to be able to get out here. Isn't that sick? God's not a child abuser. Not a child abuser. You're holy. You're saint. Child of the most high God. Jesus. Jesus did it all. Why do you think he said it is finished? He was done. He went home to heaven and he sat down. He sat down. Oh, I'm a Christian. God remembers me, remembers that I'm just, he remembers something else, no more, my sins. That's Hebrews 8, 12 and 10, 17. And God remembers our sins no more. Now let's, uh, listen, let that sink in. Uh, God said, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. How are you confessing something to God that God forgot? I love grace. It is so simple. You've got to dance around in legalism to make uh, some uh, verse sound halfway decent that you've ripped out that doesn't even go there. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, I'll praise him for his amazing grace. And you know, somebody once well said, there's no other word for grace but amazing. No other word. It's amazing. We don't have to do anything to get favor with God. You already got it. Huh? You already got it. Amen. I am a Christian regardless. Regardless. Noah found grace. Ray found grace. I'm in the ark. I'm in Christ. God shut me in. He sealed me by the, with the Holy Spirit. No contaminating sins getting into my spirit. No. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done, Calvary. Oh, Father, thank you and the Son for the plan that you had and you executed so perfectly that I don't have to worry about anything. I'm praying right now if you ain't figured that out. Hallelujah, what a Savior. You need to get excited about who you are in Christ. It's grace, grace. If it ain't grace, you ain't got it. Amen. Oh, Noah found grace. Ray found grace. No judgment. Unmerited, unearned favor of God. God's grace rescued me redeemed me, reconciled me, removed all sin, has given me rest, and grace moves me to rejoice. That's why sometimes, Brother Kim, I can't help it. Woo! I mean, it's good. Mrs. Lawson, bless her heart, she has to get wound up, but when she does, woo! Some of you need a woo. If you get into grace and just start connecting dots, honey. I've always said a lot of Christians don't have dots. That's, that's how Brother Tan, boy, he'll be preaching. Sometimes I have to really watch it because, man, I could get behind him. That's right, brother. That's right. Tell him, preach it again. Go ahead, say it again, brother, because it's good. I'm connecting dots, and the Holy Spirit's stirring me up, witnessing to me of my righteousness. That's what Hebrews says. Hebrews says the Holy Spirit will witness to you, not convict you and make you feel dirty. Huh? 
By the way, convict also means convince. The Holy Spirit will convict or convince you of your righteousness. That's what it's about. The verses above that said you were sanctified once, perfected once, cleansed once, Christ died once. Holy Spirit's going to come, come along and say, Michael, that's what he did. That's what he did. He's never going to come around and say, Michael, you're dirty. You're no good. That's the devil. His name, Satan, means the accuser of the brethren. Oh, Noah found grace. Have you? Are you resting? Are you running around patching up imaginary leaks in your boat? Huh? Oh, he sealed you. Noah found grace and he rested. Ray found grace and he rested. How about you? It's rest or struggle, Brother Tim. Come on.